Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it feels like right now, at the moment, that nothing else matters but the formlessness mm. that I'm experiencing. Mm. And it's so clear, like even in interactions and with people, where there's been an identity still playing in the how to appear and how to respond and how to act. And um, there's not much that can draw into that. But the pain that's come in the last few weeks, the seeming pain of this identity, has just gone so immense, you know, somehow. Mm. Because there's this hiding thing you speak of, no? It's that. It's this thing that hides from the truth, the, the evident truth of what is. And even now as I speak, I can, as you say, like be conscious of your consciousness and the words just coming like this. Yeah. And, um, you know, everything feels so now that nothing, even the next steps, even the next moment, I don't care. Yeah. I really don't, not even that I don't care, I don't want mm. anything that's not this because I know I came to Sahaja just for this, this, uh, this immense love that drew me to you and the immense love that I feel in the Sangha and you've just given everything in this and I'm meeting God mm. in everything and you are just my light and you are my love and you're my heart and I just I pray that may this body wherever it may go be the living embodiment of what you yes. what you point Guruji Yes, and, and I feel it in you. Becoming yourself is the best deal in the world. A strange thing to say. Why? Because everybody imagined that they are themselves still holding on to a shape that is totally unstable and being willing to keep living that shape when you are everything as the shapeless you know we feel like we are like it's a sacrifice to lose a shape into the infinite that gives birth to every shape and it will keep delaying your release because it presents you with many doors that lead nowhere and we still seem yes but the one that maybe it's, it's like that it is like uh, it's a trick but it is a divine trick because uh, you are the divine transcender. And we need these, these challenges, these seeming obstacles, in order to exercise the, 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 the true discernment, which brings you such joy as we feel and experience the fruit of the inner spirit and the wisdom of the spirit exercised in the right way. It just, you know, is then the nothingness is incomparable even with the everythingness possible. Because the everythingness is simply a flux of ever changeful impressions in the immensity of the unchanging, absolute purity of the Self. So I say, I don't want 
anyone to make tattoos out of what I share. You know, use it. You know, use it. Mm, use it. To, it's like a, every word, every pointer should be like a mirror. That just keeps reflecting uh, absoluteness of uh, yourself. And then thereafter, it doesn't matter. We, we, we talk about life like it's so big. It's not a big deal. The mind makes a big deal. You are the big deal. Because life can take so many shapes. Everybody has a story. Everybody has a book. Everybody has a talk. Everybody has a journey. Everybody has something to report. It's all nothing, actually. That's why we're so busy trying to convince each other, because it's nothing. <laughs> trying to sell each other's nothing. The wrong nothing also, not even the good nothing. It's fine. There's nothing to curse in life at all. Simply to see and to transcend the, the tendencies which keeps us in time. Time bound, shape bound, when you can remain shapeless and unbound. That is it. Can I say, Guruji, that I feel like for some time there was such an attention on what was going on in the mental part. Mm. And then I was sitting by you recently, a few days ago, and there was such an immensity in your presence that it was like, this that was being seen also was washed away in the light of this. Yeah. But it was like the two wings of the bird you talk about, the self-inquiry and the self-surrender. Yeah. And somehow, even within the self-surrender, the self-inquiry had to be alive, so that yeah. the little things don't get caught. But I just love you so much. <laughs> yes. And I'm yeah. just here for this. Yes. And I bless you and bless you, bless you for everything that you share with us. And this Sangha is so beautiful and such a, a mirror and a reflection of you. And it's so strong. Yes, 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 yes. I don't want to be and I won't be worried for you. Because I'm not ashamed of what I share. What is sh- what is shared? You know, what is shared out? I can't eat it for you. You must eat it. And the fruit of that meal is the taste we all experience in each other. No? Saja is. Uh, It's it's only for this, you know. Why we came here? We didn't plan to come here. Actually, it kind of kind of unfolded like that. But why, on reflection, why we came here? For why you come to some place as remote, as far as you know, life is. Shining and bay. Why we come to a place like this? It's not for business. It's to have that space where those who were called could really, you know, introspect, inquire, reflect, but have the reality of life that working alongside and see, not counting the stars and you know, dreaming, but feel the the feel of life and uh, the strength, because people in Sarja they grow strong. But at the same time, soft, pure. Find a humility inside, and you appreciate everything, good or bad. You make use of it. That is the heart and mind of a true seeker. And here, a seeker must come to find, without becoming a finder. 
when truth is what you are seeking, when the seeker finds what is sought, and the seeker disappears. And the sought becomes just what is. Or you can say the seeker merges into the discovery. I'm not staying behind those, yes, you know, when I found the self nine in nineteen, so on. No. Nobody is speaking like that, please. You don't have to announce your biography, autobiography. Thank you. Thank you, Guruji. I love you so much. Love you too so much. Bless you. Thank you. Bless to you. Hmm. Okay, very good. There's one person I want to see. Is here? Is uh, Tapani here? Can I talk with you? Yeah. Ah, thank you. Namaste. Namaste. I don't like speaking so much, but uh, yeah, but today. (laughs) (laughs) The ego is still very strong. I have to say. Yes. You know, you know. I, there's many. There's quite a few IT people who understand because they taught me this. You see, that um, there are some instruments that we use, which they are built in such a way they don't have power in themselves. They must be plugged into something, and they use the power of that something. For instance, you may have a light for your or a fan that works with your computer, and it just comes with a, some kind of USB kind of point. You plug it in, and it takes the power from the computer. So I say it runs on phantom power. They may probably use this term as well. So also, the mind, by itself, it has no power. Mind uh, is a component. It cannot work by itself. Nobody ever seen some stray mind running around the place. It is always a relationship bound, and it's always connected to something from where it takes its power, and from where its power can be cut. So we say your mind is strong, it, it gets that strength from you. You understand? It, 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 it doesn't have a power by itself to live by itself. It has to work, you know, it, it works with you so closely. So when you become powerful, meaning that you come true, then the mind sort of its influence in the psychological sense is diminished. And when it becomes really, really not fed, it must merge into you, it must join you. Otherwise, it's just gone in the way that we think. Gone simply means it returns to its source, which is the beautiful destiny for the mind. You don't have to cast the mind, kill it. It's part of what is this game. Everything is, comes from the, the pure awareness itself. But how it is handled, that you know, somehow you said the mind is strong. Why is the mind strong? Because you believe you are weak to it. You see? You can be without this mind, but it cannot be without you. So you have to judge which is the greater. It cannot survive without you, but you can do very well without it, and you can do very well with it also. So in what way is it strong then? I get confused how um, how, how there is a practical mind and how there is a Psychological mind, like they just intertwine somehow. Yes. Good. Put them all in one basket, easier to deal with. So, whether it's going to call it practical mind, uh, you know, I don't want to give the mind such a status. This is practical mind, this is impractical mind, this is seducing mind. No, let's just call it mind. Uh, why I can call it like this? Because uh, in any play that the mind manifests through, you are the one who is aware of it. 
You're the one who determines what it is. It is not the one that determines itself for you. Do you need to see that though? So, so I am not going to start to make things more complex by saying, okay, that's the practical mind. This is the spiritual mind. You know, this is this kind of philosophical mind. This is cycle. I don't care about it. For me, actually, I can say actually it doesn't really exist apart from our belief in it. Belief means when you believe in something, you activate its, you energize its power. It becomes real for you. So it, who gave you that mind? Who empowered it? Is it your parents? Is it your, you know, who gave this mind to make it so powerful for you? How did it become powerful? If you did not give any attention to your mind, any at all, could it be powerful? The thing is, can you stop giving attention to the mind? Because it seems like it comes with your surname and your Christian name. It's like it comes like it's, it's like it's you, or it's your advisor, or your whatever it is. But your power lies in seeing that whatever shape mind comes, whether it's a thought or a memory, a feeling, an attachment, a desire, whatever form. You know that that's, that that is that is traffic, that is a, a, something apparent. It comes and goes. That it's not stable. It's not real. Do you know that though? What's happening here now? If I reject all thoughts, then how do I go about my business, like in the daily life, or how do I? If I can't think what to do next, then it feels like a restriction. No, there's a difference between can't and won't. There's a difference between can't and won't. I mean, if you can't think, no, it's not a, it's not a sentence against you. The mind, I don't see the mind as an enemy. Not now, but one time I may have seen him like, you know, wow, he's, he's not good. You know, you make your mind better, actually, by remembering who you are. You cannot make your mind good by forgetting who you are. You see? So you say, if I say forget the mind, all I mean is that at the present it's given too much authority. It's given too much attention. Like it lives on attention, just like the body and the belly lives on food. The mind lives on your attention. Attention is one is your most powerful instrument. And it's what the mind lives on, the same thing. If you're gi- giving attention, and how you give attention to your mind? First, by believing that you are a particular person. That particular, you, you, that self-definition that you have of yourself will determine how the mind will behave in you. They are very interlinked. You say, if I don't give attention to my mind, how will I function? Okay, you're giving a lot of attention to your mind. How are you functioning? Not well. Try my way. It's like you're your mind's number one fan, you know? <laughs> the attention we give to mind, why not give to yourself? Well, that's the hard part, because um, hmm? you speak about the vastness, yeah. which I, I can't really pin, like, find it. Or, um, okay, okay. Which, which of the words I use you can relate to in terms of when I say yourself? Which one can you relate to? Maybe like a sense of being, but uh, it doesn't feel vast. Okay, forget about vast. Sense of being is okay. Does sense of being contain any particular quality? Like, you know, it's, it's you know. It still feels like a vibration or, or a vibration. Okay. If the sense of being is put by you to say it is a, like a vibration, 
the vibration can only be detected by something that's aware of it, isn't it? It's fair enough or not? You say, okay, the sense of being is a vibration. That is actually very good that you say that. It's like a kind of, it's a kind of energy, like a, so I'm aware of that. For you to say it's a vibration, you must be there to say, yeah, it feels like a vibration or something like that. Okay? So what you say by saying that is you are the observer of that vibration. Yes or no? How would you speak about vibration? Because you say, actually, I don't see vastness. I can't relate to vastness. I can't relate to you know, um, infiniteness. What can you relate to? I can relate to um, sense of being. Okay, sense of being? Okay, the sense of being. How would you define sense of being? Well, actually, it's kind of like more like an energy or, or some kind of vibration. Who is aware of the vibration? Is that a vibration? No, but it's it's like a non-quality, so it, like I can't recognize it in any way. Well, how do you know it's a non-quality? <laughs> <laughs> do things have to have a quality? You recognize it's a non-quality. How did you get that authority or that ability to know it's a non-quality? Is this non-quality something that you can look at? Or that you're looking from? More like that. Yes, that's it, you see. Now I'm catching him today, you see? You see, you see the non-quality is a non-quality. You know, you know how high that statement is for somebody to say? Anywhere you do a survey in the world amongst people and ask them, you know, like what really is there finally? What you know, what, what is the, what is really here? You know, and they come down and say, actually, you know, there's a kind of vibration. Well, what sees the vibration? Uh, well, that I cannot say. Why? Because it's, 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 it has no quality. What knows it has no quality? Is it a quality that knows it has no quality? So either your mind or you answer this question. Tell me which is the question. What was the question? <laughs> yeah, you say that you know when I ask, you know, that which is aware of the vibration, is that a vibration? You say no. Then what, what, when what is it then? You say that well, that is an, that has no quality. I said, what knows it has no quality? I'm very pleased. I wasn't expecting to go so far. You say it's got no quality. You have already confirmed that something is able to, to define and to say something which is beyond quality. What is it that can know that which is beyond quality? You have given the answer already, but I want to know if you are aware of your own answer. It feels like the eye is a quality that is very um, uncomfortable. and it's, uh, it's in the To body. itself or to something else? <laughs> The idea I have of myself, I guess. Yeah, an idea you have of yourself as an I, because I is what? Restrictive or too big? The feeling? Yeah. It's restrictive. Yeah. Yes. Then throw it out. I am not going to imprison you with I. I can't put you in a one bar prison. The one bar is the I. Okay, I can't put you in a one bar prison. <laughs> So okay, if, if the eye doesn't fit, great. Because if the eye is a shape, I mean, I'm not giving you. I'm not selling shapes. Come, come. How do you throw it away, though? Huh? How do you throw the eye away? Uh, not interested. How did I get it in the first place? Was it original to me? If it's original to me, I can't throw it away. If you say the eye feels restrictive, the eye, you see, eye is a very, it's the most important word, no? Because almost everything that is done or thought or felt or believed or imagined 
has got an eye behind it somehow, some sort of self-reference. The subject, the subjective presence that says, you know, such and such and such. No, this eye feeling, and you say that that eye is a kind of discomfort. I said to to itself or to to something else. And what did you say? The idea I have of myself. And the idea you are. The idea I have of myself. So, okay, so it's an idea. So we can leave an idea, no? You didn't say it's the truth I have of myself. You say it's an idea. We have had so many different ideas. Why can't you leave this one? Or at least you can leave it aside for the moment. Let's leave it over there for a moment, okay? Okay, if you leave the I aside for the moment, okay? And you know, okay, I say to him, sit. Okay, yeah, okay. Now what's left here now? Feelings and sensations and color. Which affects you in what way? Without your eye. Um, well, the feelings are very intimate in the body. It feels like something is very nervous, afraid. I thought that was with the eye, though. That's the eyes, kind of like friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's the eyes posse. You know what I mean? Like you know, like you know. Intimate and kind of they, they, that, that, they're, that's over there, over there with him, over there. But it kind of feels like it's over here, and feels like sometimes somebody's left the room, and it still feels like they're here. Is he still here? They just left the room. So it's just a hangover. Yes, hangover is better than a hanging on. Have a coffee, try. Because I mean, you can say it's a hangover. It's fine. We are okay with hangovers. You went out last night, had a few. This morning, you were late getting out of bed. But a hangover means it's passing. It's going to pass. No? It's passing. So you have to wait until the hangover is passed. A hangover becomes a Passover. Something wants aspirin for it. Something is what. One's aspirin for the hangover, wants it to go away. And it, it, so beyond the eye, who is you know all with all that stuff, who is over there right now, who is speaking here? Another high, or the absolute is speaking? Because I don't know if there's someone else I'm missing missing out between. Is this the mind? Yeah. Does it does it mean something or not when you say that? That's just the mind, because that's another thing that you say. I see the mind is very much uh, where if you put the eye over there, the mind will be over there too. I mean, left aside. So if you can leave it aside, so there is nothing associated with you. You are what then? Don't think it. Don't think it, because you, it's it's nearer than thinking. It's before thinking. So. You, it's confession time. Nothing. 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 Is that just the nothing in the word or the nothing beyond the words? Are you feeling very uncomfortable sitting here now or are you feeling much more which I'm feeling better and yes. less um, of something, less of a something. Yes. Yeah. So the 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 little bit of the somethingness that's left here will take what to? Must it be honoured or it can it just be just a hangover? Well, I choose that it is just a hangover that it can be left. Yeah. Here. So whatever is left here. If not the mind, can it have a hangover? Only with imagination and, and belief. Okay. 
which has authority over you, or is something that you engage? Engage. Okay. Wow. Wow, Tafani. <laughs> you see, all this power, all this power is here, you know? And still it was given, so much energy given to the mind. So there must be, what was the fascination with mind then? Because you're all, all this power is, is you, you're all this. Not, okay, maybe you might say, well, I don't see this power. It is power and uh, yeah. just too much importance given to the body mind. Yes. And, With, and how it feels. Yeah. Which ends today or carries on? Ends. Whoa. <laughs> that feels so good. <laughs> that feels so good. That feels so good right here, I gotta tell you. I feel good for you. I feel good with you. I mean, that is, this, you know, even just to come to this place of seeing, I mean, this is, it's like the difference between, you know, heaven and hell. Actually, beyond, actually. It's actually beyond. I don't want to give it the shape of hell and the shape of heaven. It's beyond that, actually. You know, all these things are were going to be determined by you, whether you want to give more energy to them, or whether you choose to cut it, having realized that actually you didn't make what you are, you are what you are. But giving energy to these thoughts, they grew and became, you know, the thumbnail that hides the sun. And this sun is not even there, it's here. If the sun is here, what can hide it? You know, it's just a thought, even, and even the thought cannot hide it. You have to really believe that the thought can hide you, which you can't believe it, actually, and yet you can. This is a funny thing, and I'm so happy. So funny. I was meant to leave on Friday. I have a ticket to Finland. Well, you have used today very well. As you have used today so well, then whatever other days don't mean really not relevant to that where you speak from. Thank you for being with us uh, this uh, time moment. I would even say timelessness. I would even say timelessness, because this is really the purest ground, groundless ground from which I can really relate authentically with who I know you to be. You know, and um, yes. I can't tell you, but you can see the joy that that uh, comes actually. Um, when we are in acknowledgement, at least recognition and acknowledgement 
of that which is truly here, which alone is worthy of our most intimate attention, actually. And uh, which is what is called our self-attention. Our self-attention, which is a non-phenomenal recognition, meaning that is not one thing watching something else. And if we can relate from here, if we can relate to this, then tell me what happens to your personal problems, so to speak. They have no significance here. They live in another realm. You have to descend into the realm of personhood, which although we have lived in that land, we are not citizens of that land. We have passed through, or rather, it is passing through us. If you get my picture, you know. It is the stages that we need to experience, that the, the sense of the journey of uh, a personal existence, and to see, you know, to taste and to see, does this satisfy who I truly am? But you have to find out who you truly are. And even when we find out who we truly are, we still we are still trafficking for a while. Still going back into the red light district of the mind, a little bit of fun, coming back out and coming back in, and gradually reacclimatizing our consciousness to its own source. And that's why I say it takes time. It's like uh, transitioning, but. When you come to the full realization, you see that's also play. That is also because people can say that is also seen. That is also seen, and the implication behind the admission that is also seen means that because it's also seen, it passes, and whatever comes and goes is not real. It has momentary significance, but it doesn't have enduring significance. It doesn't have the depth. It doesn't have the credibility that we give it to somehow wish to hold it in memory, a thing which is not honouring the truth of you. And after a certain point, it just seems automatic that the visitor who came to visit and was not a good visitor, was given his own key. And eventually became the you became a tenant in your own house. And the visitor is charging you rent. <laughs> and you say, Oh, you know, life is so unkind. No, you're living it unwisely. The Lord said, You are the tenant of this house in this play. But if you wake up, if you use this bodily life really well, you will see you are I. If you don't see, uh, you will be given more time to see. And whether that is just more time, uh, may mean more lifetime. We are not as separate as we think, and thank God we don't have free will in the quiet way. That even if we make the bad choices, you are still the self, dreaming a bit longer. You are never not the self. We are never not the self. But we can just be in the dream a bit longer. Sometimes the dream has to reach nightmare status for us to say, you know, enough, or to turn the attention within and to confirm that which is unchanging.
So in, in, if satsang is a success for you, it, the emphasis should not be that you learn something, but more that it made you empty. It brought you back to your emptiness. That's the highest teaching, by the way. You can't write it down on paper. Highest teaching is no teaching at all. It erases knowledge, but it doesn't put ignorance in its place. Or it erases not knowledge, but the dependence on knowledge, the faith in phenomenal knowledge. Real knowledge is non-phenomenal. It is the same as is. Real knowledge is, is. <laughs> ah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I say that when. If you have a cold, if the phlegm, when the phlegm comes up in the throat, spit him out, don't swallow him. It's easy to swallow again. There's even a little joy. <laughs> when he <it> comes, <coughs> go find some place. Don't go, it's a bit inconvenient. Hi. No, no. You understand what I mean? I'm not being disgusting. Okay. Thank you. Are you in the right place? Yes. Here? Yes. Here? Yes. We're good. Maybe uh, Bale, will you sing something today? You can do it.
Father, you are alone, you are all in one, you are one in all. Alone, alone, alone. Thank you, my Lord. For letting me see your eyes Even just for one time Thank you, my Lord For letting me walk with you Even just for one time Thank you, Father, I know this is your will, so take everything, leave only one shrine. Where I come on my knees, where there's justice and peace, where alone you exist. My father is one My father is love One love One love One love Father we are one love And you are the one and you are the love Was I ever born? Or there is only one One love One love That gave life to us all To us all to us all that sees everything and protects everyone Gives them what they need, gives them what they want How merciful you are, my Lord, my Lord, one Lord Could I ever love? Could this love be mine? Tell me what is this love that shines from the infinite heart of the Lord, my Lord? And it's bound to awaken in the heart of all, of all. Oh, friend. Rejoice, rejoice, be happy and rejoice, for it will awaken in the heart of all. Of all, of all. One love is pure, one love is whole, one love is for all. One love never comes, one love never goes It is not concerned with anything at all, at all It is ever free, it is ever pure It is all that only one love can be It is my father and it's also his son His son It is the father and it's also the son
Lord, one love, 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 one love,